Peter, the day after the upper room experience, confidence showed up in it. You looked at him before, come on, be honest, before Pentecost, no confidence. After that experience in the upper room, confidence showed up. Thank you, Lord, as I find a place to just bring this to a close this morning. We've got communion this morning that I want you to be a part of and take this morning. Look at what the Bible says in Philippians 4.13. I can do what? All things. Right. If that scripture can't give you confidence, I don't know what can. That you can do all things through Christ. It strengthens you. The things that you face every day. Job, family, the kids, finances. God will give you confidence that you can handle it. I can do all things. The key is through Christ who strengthens me, who gives me confidence. I can do all things. In Hebrews 3 11, the writer says this, therefore, Holy brethren, calls you holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Is that is he speaking to us? Yes. He says, therefore, holy brethren, calls you holy, holy people of God. Listen, if you belong to anything that belongs to God is holy. That's right. I just want to I throw that in. Sometimes we look at ourselves and says, I, I, I keep. No, I don't have. no, if you belong to God, he calls you holy. Praise. Holy brethren. Partakers of the heavenly calling. I'm a partaker. Are you? I'm a partaker of the heavenly calling. He calls me holy. Well, that'll boost my confidence right there. That God approves of me and you. And then he continues on. He says, consider the apostles. Look, look at them. And high priest. The apostle and high priest of our confession. Jesus. You got, if you consider him, confidence comes to your life. I know I, I'm driving this, but I, I need to. Verse number 6 of that chapter, same chapter 3, he says, we in the house of the Lord, if we hold fast, if we hold fast, the middle part of it, if we hold fast, the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. You see that? Don't cast your confidence away. Hold fast to it. Let's touch on the next thing so you gotta hold on to it. Hold on, hold on, hold on to it. Look, look, the devil wants to pry over your fingers and open your hand to, to let it just vanish, but, but you're gonna have to hold on, grab a hold, hold fast to it. How do you hold fast to something? You get a grip on that thing. He says, if we hold fast, that means to me I've gotta hold on to this thing because there's an enemy, there are circumstances, there are things that wanna take this away from me, but they're not gonna do it. Rejoicing of the hope, firm to the end. Yes. Man, this is good stuff yes, right here. When we do that, look at what he says in Hebrews 10. I'm just giving you some groceries today. Hebrews 10, 9 says, Therefore, somebody say, Therefore, brethren. Therefore. Having boldness. Another translation says, Confidence. Yes. Therefore, brethren, having confidence. Same word, same group word, to enter the holies. The holiest, or the holy of holies. How do you do that by the blood of the Lamb? We have confidence. See, this holy of holies was only reserved, if you will, for a certain man, the high priest. Not even the other priest could do this, could go in there. And only one man once a year. And he had to be very careful how he enters that holy of holies. Tradition says that they had to tie a rope to his ankles. As he goes beyond the veil into the Holy of Holies and, and, and observe the mercy seat with the angels, with the seraphim on both sides. And he's beholding this and he's supposed to sprinkle some blood of the offering. We went through that, remember, in our teaching. And this man had little tussles, had little bells at the end of his, of his garments. That while he's moving within the Holy of Holies, those outside could kind of hear him. Yeah, he's still alive, he's doing fine. 
God. If it ever stopped, if it was ever as quiet, they'd probably think he's dead and they have to pull him out. Right. Nobody would go in after him. They had to pull him. Because it's such a holy place. Reserved only for one man, and that he could go only once a year. But now, without fear, without intimidation, without guilt, without shame, Scripture says we now can enter that Holy of Holies with confidence. You and I can enter God's presence, God's holy presence, with confidence that He will hear us. Come on, somebody, that's why you go before Him. You go to the mercy seat, you go to God. Why? To bring your petition, the things that you ask of Him, the needs that you have. And He says you can have confidence and boldness to go before Him like that. How? Through the blood of the Lamb. That's your access code. I pray you receive this this morning. Don't you dare leave this house saying, I don't know what he said. I don't know about all that confidence stuff. I'm just going to stay here and then all oh, me, oh my. I pray the Holy Spirit infuse you today with the confidence that you can have what you ask. God is on your side. He loves you. You ask, preacher, Pastor, how do I gain back my confidence? How do I take it back? What I've lost or what I've thrown away? How do I take it back? Number one, there are many areas. I'm just going to give you a few. Number one, confidence comes from being consistent in whatever you're doing. Think about that. The first time you went to get on a bicycle when you were like three years old and four, I mean, you know, you didn't have any confidence. I mean, you got on the thing and it was wobbly and they had to hold the thing, right? But a few times down the road and a few falls and a few scrapes, Come on, you gained what? Confidence. You gained? Confidence. Right, so the next time, uh, you know, when somebody's trying to hold the thing, they get mad at you and say, let it go, let it go. I've had one of my little kids do that not too long ago. See, don't, don't hold it, I can do it. What is that? Confidence. Right. Persistent. Consistent in the thing that you're doing. I tell you this morning, you're going to have confidence show up in your life when you begin to be consistent in your prayer life. Yes, amen. That's right. Consistency in your prayer life will boost confidence. Yes. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Consistency in studying and getting into the Word of God will gain you share with me. Confidence. If you want the power of God in your life, but you say, well, I just don't have time for the Word. Well, forget about confidence then. Well, I just don't have time for prayer. Forget about confidence because confidence comes when you're consistent. That's why he said to Joshua, remember, day and night, not every now and then, be consistent in getting into this book. Make it a habit in your life. So whatever you do often produces and builds confidence back. It's in everything. You can just look at all kinds of examples right now. Start thinking about examples, right? Yes. So in your worship, in whatever, in laying hands on people, in, in, uh, the more you're consistent in your prayer, in your study of the Word, and, and showing up and, and being in church. How many know the first time it was, you had no confidence, you didn't know anybody, it was like, oh, who are these people? But the more you came, it's like, well, they don't bother, they're okay. <laughs> they took a bath, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> right? Confidence, now you just walk up in there, and there you go. <laughs> and now for somewhere to get, no, 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 too much confidence. I gotta close. Number two, write it down. The second thing about this thing is three areas in it. To gain confidence back in your life. Watch this, we're gonna close. Crush the desire to compare yourself to others. That's good. Yes. Yes. Stop trying to be like somebody else. Because you're gonna find out you don't, you're not like them, and you, you're always gonna fall short, always comparing, and how many know that'll crush your confidence? Because you're not designed to be like them. God made you you. If you wanted two of them, it made twins, and even the twins are different. <laughs> right? Crush the desire, right in there, to compare yourself to others. The second part of that is throw negative self talking out the door. Stop talking negative about yourself. Stop seeing yourself as nothing. I had another picture in mind of a kitty cat. You've seen it. Where he looks in the mirror and he sees a lion. You see it. Stop seeing yourself.
yourself as a grasshopper. Stop seeing yourself as a lonely old bug. Read the Old Testament, you'll find out about with Joshua and the guys. People came back and said, we look like grasshoppers. That's what they saw. And they said, and the other people saw us in the same way. See, other people will see you the same way you see yourself. They start seeing you with no confidence. Well, and they, and they pass up the job, they pass you by, because they see no confidence. But when they see confidence, it'll attract them to you. Yeah. I wish they had more time. My time's up. Throw negative self-talking out the door. Don't speak yeah. negative over yourself. We have a habit of doing that. You look in the mirror and you condemn yourself. Hello? Hello? You don't like certain things about you. You speak negative. You speak damning words over yourself. And I'm not even talking about other people. I'm talking you do that yourself. And don't blame the devil on that one. The devil told me. No, you did it. You said those things out of your mouth. I said you stop it in Jesus' name. Stop seeing yourself as God sees you. Stop saying, I'm the least in my family, I'm the worst, I'm nothing, I'm no good, I'm not confident. Say like God says, you mighty man of valor, you mighty warrior. God is with you. Somebody shout amen. amen. Number three in that portion is remember that God loves you. Remember that God loves you. Just the way you are. He has a plan for your life. He's going to build confidence in you. You're going to find yourself walking. I know you've got another song ready, but I thought there was a song in my heart that said, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. If I, if I could rewrite just a little bit of that first verse, go back to the first verse, it says, My confidence is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend but holy me on Jesus' name, on Christ the Son, rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Your hope, your confidence, your faith is built on nothing less than God's righteousness. I dare not trust anything else. Because the minute I trust in what I see in the natural, what other people say, it'll mess up my confidence. But if I look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, I can endure. I can be anything He wants me to be. I can do all things through Christ. I can leave this place confident that God loves me. Confident that my sins are forgiven. Do you understand how many beautiful Christians have no confidence that their sins have been washed away? Have no confidence that when they die, they'll make it to heaven. When you really ask them, they say, I don't know, I hope so. There's no hope so. Have a confidence of God today that when I close my eyes on this side of the Jordan, I'll open them up on the other side. Hey, confidence in the one who saved you is the one who can keep you to the end. Would you stand all over this place as we worship the Lord? If you say, Pastor, I need a little confidence in my life. I've thrown it away about I've let circumstances and let things and other things choke my confidence and I have none. I, I can't even look up into people's faces. I told some of you a long time ago there was a day in my life as a young boy I had such problems with self-image. Inferiority, you can't believe it. And when others around me, what are you talking about? But there was something that I couldn't shake. Feeling less than, you understand, anybody? But one day, one day, I had a little confidence with the man that spoke to Moses in the burning bush. Same man, same God. heard what he had to say about me. And I've had to change my mind about myself. I said, God, if you can use me, then I'm available. And he placed confidence within my heart. Confidence to look someone in the eye. Confidence to have a testimony. Confidence. It's amazing what that can do for you. Can you 
you imagine, listen with me today, can you imagine, beloved, what you can be tomorrow if you leave this room filled with confidence? Gently bring 